Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back. It is week four of the college football season, and um, this is the Carla and Crappy show. Uh, I am Crappy. I'm in Pittsburgh. That's Carla. She's in Nashville. Hello. Hi, How are you doing? I'm recovering. We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> uh, fair enough. We are also joined by AJ, also in Pittsburgh, on the other side of Pittsburgh, actually. AJ, how are you doing? AJ, uh, I'm muted. doing there great. You, there you go. There it is. I hit the button. I was trying to be. I was trying to be a cordial member of the program we and not be on. Not not be sitting over here clicky and clacking. Uh, I was on the north side <laughs> on Saturday for a mm -hmm. big event, uh, one that many people in Pittsburgh should have attended, and that's the Alcasand Open House. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> for those of you who are not aware, um, Alcasand is the uh, water treatment facility for effectively most of Allegheny County. Yeah. Um, all if you're wondering where your poop goes and you live in the city, the greater Pittsburgh area, it's probably there. Um, and they're doing some amazing things. And we watched uh infrastructure week in action. They're spending like a billion and a half dollars mm -hmm. upgrading all sorts of things. It's absolutely fascinating to see the entire process. And they do a wonderful event and it's completely free. So the next time they do it, it's like every fall they mm -hmm. do it. You should go to you the should. Alcassane Open House if you're in town. Um, my, my wife and I have done that. Um, we we don't have kids, uh, although we saw lots of people with kids there, and the, the kids the kids absolutely loved it. Um, but Kelly and I did too, so uh, that was absolutely a thing to do. Um, we don't have. We're not going to spend a ton of time uh, recapping last weekend. Ohio State didn't play. Uh, Penn State didn't play. Um, we had scheduling conflicts and and all and all kinds of fun things. So just briefly. Briefly, we will take a look back. But then I have questions for both of you. So, but, but uh -huh. first, Carla. Yes. Um, what did, uh, what, what did you happen to, to notice about, uh, last weekend besides the, the unfortunate result of the, uh, 100 miles of, uh, unpleasantness? Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't, that wasn't any good. And, and no. for, for context here, um, I was actually, I didn't mention this on the show last week. I was in Chicago this mm -hmm. weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, I can in fact confirm that Lake Michigan is that shade of blue. They are nice. not color correcting. Um, we were on Lakeshore drive. The, um, the weather was beautiful in Chicago. Mm -hmm. It was 82 and sunny all weekend. It was oh. absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and then it got cool in the evenings, and I was attending the outdoor wedding um, of my brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. um, so we were having a lot of fun with family. My my daughter Ellie, the um, our, our unofficial Carl and Crappy Show mascot, I think. Um, yay feet ball! Yay feet ball! Yay feet ball! Yeah, we'll talk about her in a little bit. Okay. Um, but she was the ring bearer in the wedding, and we mm -hmm. just had a good old time um, dueling pianos at the reception, and I danced to more Chappelle Roan than I ever have in my life. <laughs> um, it was. It was fabulous. So congratulations. He, they don't listen to the show, but congratulations to my 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 brothers in law, um, Andy and Tim. Um, it was a great weekend up in Chicago with the family. So I didn't see a ton other okay. than Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm. Um, but that being said, I was, you know, as a college football fan with a bunch of college football fans representing a lot of different schools. So that was mm -hmm. fun. Um, we had Northwestern strongly represented, UF strongly represented, Texas A&M was represented. Mm. Um, you know, so we had, yeah, there was some spiciness happening because that game, Texas A&M in Florida was happening while we were at the wedding. So that was fun. Um, nice. So there was, you know, everybody was kind of checking their phones kind of discreetly as mm -hmm. things were happening through the day. So I was kind of doing the same thing. Saw the middle score, was not happy about that. Um, some other things that I saw and, and recapped on once we once we got back from from our trip. Um, oh, Vandy. Yeah, I know. Oh, Vandy. You get everybody all excited and we're like, we're getting Vandy to a bowl game. And then you go and lose on the road at Georgia State. Uh, that's not a good way to get there um, to six wins and the doors never even led in the game. Like it, it was yeah. not, it was not good. Um, and I looked at their schedule. I don't know how Vandy gets to six wins now um, because remaining on their schedule. I mean, they've got ball state in October. Mm -hmm. Okay. That holds some promise, mm -hmm. but they've got Mizzou, Bama, Texas, South Carolina, LSU, and Tennessee Oof. all on their schedule. And it's, uh, and I didn't include Auburn because they're going to win the Auburn game. <laughs> yeah, but, right. Yeah, just yes. chalk that up as a W right now. Okay. Diego Pavia, yep. the revenge they're, tour continues. They're gonna win the Auburn game, but like I don't know where they get two more wins uh, if they uh, in, in that schedule. And that's just yes. that's heartbreaking. Um, other thing that we we should note, um mm -hmm. 
uh, we have a new number one mm -hmm. uh, in Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, Georgia looked extremely mortable for yes, the first time in a while. Yes, they did. Um, I, did you did you read the AP Gamer? Uh, I did not. The AP Gamer out of that called mm. them lethargic. Lethargic. <laughs> I mean, I watched quite a, a good portion of that game. Yeah. Ugh, I, listen, if listen, I know that it's effectively going to come down to the Big Ten and the SEC being the power to at some point in the future, but you don't need to be the same thing. OK, we <laughs> don't need more Big Ten football. In fact, we need less. Um, <laughs> and that was a Big Ten ass football game. It was yes. just like it was like a, a, a movable object against it. An irresistible force. It uh -huh. just just no, like everybody it was just kind of just there. It, yes. Like nothing wanted to move, nothing yeah. wanted to do anything. And Mark Stoops is a coward for punting. Listen, you tried that Iowa nonsense where you tried to punt to win and mm -hmm. it didn't work for you. You nope. should learn your lesson from this. It's coward. Just, well, well and it, like, I mean, having not seen the game and looking at it, I'm just like, okay. So like Georgia ekes out an ugly win over Kentucky. This is the same Kentucky team that just got their tails kicked off of them mm -hmm. by South Carolina the weekend before. So like, yes. is Georgia who we thought they were? Mm. And we had this question about Georgia last year, right? Mm. That we were like, is Georgia as good as, as and, and they turned out that they were good, but not as good as what we've seen in the past. So interesting, right. just kind of like put a pin in that mm -hmm. um, and see how that plays out. Um, I definitely picked the wrong upset in the rivalry games. Mm -hmm. um, Oregon easily handled the Beavs. Um, Wazoo did. wins at home, though, and that's a lot of fun. That um, so Chuck won. Wazoo up did not win at home. That was right. That was, oh, that, was that was on the that road. Was a, no. It was a neutral site game in Seattle, neutral. which is technically a neutral site. But uh, funny enough, so I was I I was interested in, to understand like why are you doing this in a neutral site, but it's in Seattle? Like Husky Stadium is like right there. You you mentioned and, this last week. Dude, why did they? Why why why? Well, it turns out that most of the people who go to Washington State, mm -hmm. when they leave Washington State, they go to Seattle. And so okay. there's a ton of Coug alums who live in Seattle. And so having a neutral site game at Lumen Field, which is not on UW's campus, mm -hmm. still brings in a ton of Cougar fans. And okay. so they still were there showing up, being loud and everything. And it wasn't a UW home game with all the UW stuff around it. Um, the game should have been in Pullman. And it would have been mm. way more insane to do it there. But um, sp speed side, a speed option to the short side of the field, Jetfish, you're better than oh, that. Oh, no, that was awful. You're, you're better than that. Yeah. God, that play was Don't do that. dead at the outset. Uh, oh. And then um, one final, one final yeah, thought before please. I wrap up. Yeah. As we were driving back from Chicago on Sunday night, we stayed in Lafayette, Indiana. Mm -hmm. They were still definitely recovering from Saturday. That was a beat down they got smoked yeah it was it was funny because we walked into our hotel and like you could tell that it was supposed to be celebratory on saturday mm -hmm. it was you know welcome boilermaker alums and right. all that kind of right. stuff and we walked in and it just it just looks so sad it looks so sad on Sunday womp, womp. That's, so yeah Purdue. That's mm. so that was my like recapping what okay I, what i caught this what you were aware of much. okay Okay. Yep. Um, the AJ, uh, you spent some of the day looking at poop, and uh, yep. obviously you did get to see a little bit uh, later in the day. Um, anything jump out? I at did you see poop later you? in the day too. Well, okay. I watched Just Georgia, Kentucky. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but what I will say is, I'm calling last weekend Fear of God weekend. Okay. There were a lot of teams that got the fear of God put into them. Mm -hmm. Um, there were a number like, Hey, Auburn, I understand that you're worried about Diego Pavia, but you were only up by one at halftime over New Mexico. That's not the same. And that's not even the same team. That's New Mexico heavy. That's, yeah. that's a different team. Uh, you almost lost to them. Um, South Carolina scared the lights out of LSU. Mm -hmm. yes, Kentucky did. scares the lights out of Georgia. Um, what was the other one? I just, I was, I was flipping through. I was just like scrolling through the scores. Uh, East Carolina put the fear into App State. Yep. Uh, they were up 16 nothing at one point, mm -hmm. and then App State ran off 21 until East Carolina kicked a field goal in the fourth quarter. Uh, Troy was up by four at halftime on Iowa. Yep. Um, right. But we have to talk about a game near and dear, quite literally, to our uh, to our hearts, yes. and that's the backyard brawl. Mm -hmm. um, that game is stupid year in and year out. No matter how good either team is, it's going to get stupid at some point. Mm -hmm. The Narduzzi high-octane offense 
Sorry, I couldn't say it without without <laughs> laughing. Um, couldn't get anything done. The second oh. half at one point, Pitt had was I think it was like into the fourth quarter. The Pitt offense had like four yards of total offense. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the final four minutes of the game happened, and they went, "Oh wait, we know how to move the ball again," and they just ran off two seventy yard drives and won the right. game. Right. Um, I know a number of people who were there. Uh, it was just as stupid as you thought it was, mm-hmm. and this is a game that should be like mandated by federal law because this is interstate commerce. That it should be mandated by federal law that these two teams play every year. Full stop. I agree. I agree. Um, yep. And then the Pennsylvania State Legislature needs to step in and make Pitt and Penn State play every year. It's Agreed. just how this needs to be. I'm sorry, they're never going to get into the same conference, so they should just be required to play these games. This, these are the games that matter. Mm-hmm. Like no matter how mm-hmm. bad a season is, no matter how good a season is, this is what actually matters. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will always ride for these sorts of games. Same thing with Oregon, Oregon State, Washington, Washington State. Right. Um, they are these are truly good games, and uh, we should applaud them and and make sure that they get played as much as they and can. Encourage that sort of um, thing. Speaking of getting the fear of God put into them, hey yeah. Arizona State, mm-hmm. hey friends. <laughs> <laughs> You good? I mean, listen, let's put a let's put some respect where it's due. Jordan McLeod is amazing. Texas yes. State is really, really good. I watched that entire game on a plane. Um technology is amazing. Technology is incredible, <laughs> y'all. It is amazing. I watched, I had multiple ways to watch that game. Uh-huh. I was I found out that the uh so on how else I fly back American. Um they have like direct, they have Dish Network. That's what it was. Dish Networks, it does the live TV on the planes. Mm-hmm. And I discovered via other services that I was like four minutes behind, like linear oh, okay. time wise yeah, behind yeah. the game. So I'm like watching people react to it. And I'm like, what? What? Is it like the next play? Is it mm-hmm. the next play? And then I realized <laughs> that it, no, it's like four minutes ahead. Uh, YouTube TV at one point got me real close. I was okay. damn near live, uh, which was pretty great. Uh, and UNLV uh, beats Kansas. Mm-hmm. That's hilarious uh, and amazing. We love that for the Mountain West. Um, so yeah, there's there are good games all up and down the schedule. Even though there wasn't any name brand games, the the literal ranked on ranked game was Missouri and Boston College. We were going back to 2007. Get in. Um, <laughs> it was a great year then. It'll be a yeah. great year again. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there, there was a lot of I think just a lot of teams went like, okay, we kind of figured some things out. No, we didn't. Uh oh. <laughs> And so now they have to like reassess some things. And so I think this is this is when we're actually going to start kicking into the actual real part of the season. Uh, I, I agree. Um, it, it feels like we have a lot of the, the preliminary stuff out of the way uh, for the most part. Not everybody is uh, ready to jump into conference place, uh, that sort of stuff yet. But um, but yeah, this this week feels more substantial uh, than uh, than this early than than last weekend did. Uh, at least as you're, as you're looking at the schedule and and uh, how it looks on paper, um, I have questions. Uh, just kind of based on I did stuff that's happened recently. Um, and I would begin to let, let both of you answer. Um, uh, AJ, we're going to start with this one because you know as we uh you you handled your assignment on the West Coast. Um, yes, uh, bravo to you both for for doing that. Um, perfectly. Uh, yeah. Breaking, Fantastic. breaking the news of the pack six. Um, and that's my, that's my, my first question, which teams should we, there, there's stuff out there about which teams they apparently are pursuing, but um, the, the, the conference has to get to eight, uh, I think by 2026. So it's at six right now with the, uh, with the addition of Boise state, Colorado state, Fresno state and San Diego state, which teams should the conference target to get to eight. Uh, this AJ. one is this one is a little bit more straightforward than people realize. It's okay. the Nevada schools. It's Nevada and UNLV. Okay. And the reason for that is they are a package deal. Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, what is it? The university. So UNLV is the University of Nevada at Las Vegas. Las Vegas right. And Nevada is the University of Nevada at Reno. They are part of the same system like UCLA mm-hmm. and Cal are. Mm-hmm. And so uh, they saw what happened to Cal and the board of regents has already come out and said like, "Mm -mm, you can't take UNLV if you don't take Nevada. Sorry. Okay. That's just how this is going to go. You have to take UNR and UNLV the same way. They are a package deal. Um, I would love to see them pick up, like basically take the mountain West and Mm -hmm. put it into the PAX 12 and, and, and move on there. Okay. Um, I think at the same time, 
there's some interesting opportunities. Mm-hmm. I would love to see the Montana schools come in, Montana hmm. and Montana State. They okay. are real good at football, mm-hmm. like real, real good. Um, the question has always been, and this plays to the App States, Georgia Southerns, and the Dakota schools of if you come up from FCS to FBS, mm-hmm. obviously there's more money involved, sure. but you are not always in the most attractive locales for recruits Mm -hmm. and you've been able to get the like castaways of fbs to come down and still play for you because you have winning programs yeah i don't know how well that will transfer for the dakotas and the montanas as it does for the app states jmu's georgia southerns of the world because they are in um higher population higher football population footprints Mm -hmm. Um, I would love to see the Montana schools come up. I think they would be great in a new Pac-12. But I think they could get the Pac-12 to eight just by taking the Nevada schools. It solves a big problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vegas, Las Vegas is a market they want to be in. There is a yeah. reason why they went and grabbed San yeah. Diego State mm-hmm. and made sure San Diego State was one of the first ones in because they wanted back into Southern California. Mm-hmm. Um, I could maybe see NAU too and grab some into the Arizona markets, but Flagstaff is like a four and a half hour drive from Phoenix. It's not close. The American West continues to be large. So I think you have a number of different options there, but I think the the Nevada schools would be the easiest package deal to go pick up and go. Okay. Carla, what do you think? That's an, that's an interesting thing that you mentioned there about the, the UNLV thing, because if we all remember the PAC 12 moved their title game, Mm-hmm. to vegas right because that's a market that they want so that's an that's a really interesting observation um i mean i agree that would be a, that would be a really easy thing um i mean there's a part of me and it'll never in a million years happen but there's mm-hmm. a part of me that goes hey stanford and cal what are you doing um but it will never happen because of the of the money mm-hmm. um they're in a conference that's going to pay them a lot more money it really the only way that, that would happen is if they figured out that the budgets weren't going to work with travel okay. with the non-revenue gen schools. If they decide that this all this flying across the country is just draining their budget too fast, then then the Pac-12 might be able to slip an offer and say, hey, what do you think? Mm-hmm. Um, but I think a stronger move at this point is going Nevada, um, getting to eight, getting that potential automatic qualifier. That's going to help you sell better media rights. And then maybe you can approach... You know, I, I think everybody else that was in the Pac-12 is gone, gone. I, mm-hmm. I don't think they're coming back. But Stanford and Cal got left out, right? And so if you entice them, they might be willing to listen, but that's a long shot. Mm-hmm. So get to your eight teams, go to Nevada. Okay. I think I think the challenge there is would just be getting them out of the ACC because they did sign grant of right things. Right. They're right. in the same boat as FSU and Clemson now. Um, shout out to a friend of mine who is a uh, Clemson or a Fort, Florida State fan. Oh, Deeply excuse me, Chris. Um, but a number of FSU fans are convinced that like ESPN has an option that they have to pick up to mm-hmm. get to 2036. And there's <laughs> the potential that they don't. Um, it would be stupid of ESPN to not do that. They have the yeah. they have them locked up in a in that money deal and they don't have to pay them to get the ACC's inventory. Like mm-hmm. it would be stupid to do it. Stanford and Cal, Stanford in particular, is in the ACC for the non-revenue sports. They a, the ACC has the best everything else mm-hmm. that Stanford, I think specifically wants to be in. And Stanford has a infinite money glitch with their endowment where they can kind of eat it if they need to, like they can just go like, Hey, we're going to take some of this endowment and put it towards athletics. Uh, Cal is getting uh calimony as it's mm-hmm. called. Uh, they are getting a payment from <laughs> UCLA mm-hmm. because UCLA went to the big 10. And I think they're, or I think UCLA is ordered to pay Cal like 10 million a year or something like that. Uh, it's literally called calimony by the local media. So <laughs> I could see, I could see them. It makes it makes more physical geographic sense for them to come back to the Pac-12. Mm-hmm. But I don't think Stanford will want to come back because I don't think what the existing Mountain West and the two Oregon and Washington State schools offer what they really want, which is all of the non-revenue sports. Stanford doesn't care mm-hmm. about football or men's basketball. They're happy That's to true. be great at women's basketball and everything else. They are yes. for like most people don't know this. Stanford is basically the uh 
U.S. Olympic Committee's farm program yeah. in <laughs> damn near everything because they put more scholarship money into those things. So Katie mm -hmm. Ledecky went to Stanford. Yeah. Um, you have uh, all of the track athletes that you've seen either go to Oregon or they go to Stanford. They go to one of those two schools. Yep. So they care way more about that. And so the ACC gives them the opportunity to compete at that same level. And so I think they'll, they'll stay there okay. um, even with all the travel. Okay. Okay. Uh, we are about all about uh, Maction here on the Carlin Crappy Show. Uh, and the Mac has had a big season so far with uh, uh, Northern Illinois beating uh, Notre Dame, Toledo just destroying Michigan State last or Michigan State, Mississippi State last weekend. Um, there are multiple opportunities for upsets of a similar, similar caliber. Uh, on Saturday, and I'm my my question for you is of these games, which Mac school has the best chance to win? Let me let me good run down the list real quick. Uh, Miami of Ohio at Notre Dame. My Bobcats are hoping for a letdown Kentucky team because they are playing at UK. Kent State at Penn State. Toledo at Western Kentucky. Bowling Green at Texas A and M. Akron at South Carolina. Who's got the best shot at winning? Carla. Up until last Saturday, I would have said um, Ohio at Kentucky. Okay. Um, now I'm not sure um, whether that was Kentucky playing up or Georgia playing down or maybe mm -hmm. a combination, combination of both. Of both yeah. Right. Um, I pray to God it's not Kent. Um, <laughs> I, I don't we've, think we've that's already been be through enough. Problem. We've already been through enough. With yeah. the Mac teams in Happy yeah. Valley. Thank you very much. Um, who's Bowling Bowling Green had? Bowling Green is at Texas A&M. Uh, I don't like that matchup. Mm -hmm. Bowling Green looks good. Like yeah. Bowling Green yeah, looks could. really, really good, but I don't, but Texas A&M ain't it. Mm -hmm. Um, give me Bowling Green over Kentucky potentially. If that was the matchup, I think that yeah, would be an interesting okay. game, but, okay. um, yeah, I guess I'll go, I guess I'll go Ohio. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you at Kentucky, uh, AJ, uh, what, what, who's got the, the best chance for, to, to, to fly the Maction flag this weekend? So you mentioned Toledo and Western Kentucky. Uh -huh. I don't think that's necessarily like, a that wouldn't be an upset to me. And yeah, you're, you're right. That's a, that's like, a, um, it's a, like a fairely even, even ish match here. Mm -hmm. Um, Bowling Green beating Texas A&M would be hilarious, but the <laughs> way, way funnier one. The so much funnier one is Miami of Ohio beating Notre Dame. Absolutely. Like yeah. if they lose to two Mac teams at home to open the season, because remember Notre Dame won 66, nothing, not at home. They mm -hmm. won that in Lafayette. If they beat, listen, the funniest thing in the world would be, I still have the reaction gifts. Like I made reaction gifts of mm -hmm. the Notre Dame loss. Okay. Marcus Freeman doesn't make it to Sunday with a job if they lose to Miami of Ohio. <laughs> Full stop. They will fire him so fast. Mm -hmm. Um it is that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Um the only other thing, I mean, Ohio, Kentucky would be interesting. I, I don't think Kentucky's gonna have the letdown like that. I really okay. don't. I think, listen. Do not at me when it's like halftime and Kentucky's mm -hmm. only up by like six or seven. Yeah. Like, right. don't at me when that happens. Mm -hmm. They'll pull away eventually. But it's one of those things where I I, I truly like Miami of Ohio. I'm giving my give me Miami of Ohio. Their fave the Notre Dame is favored by 28. Mm -hmm. Give me Miami of Ohio. Okay. Okay. Uh to your point about Toledo, Western Kentucky, um, the Toledo is a two and a half point favorite there mm -hmm. on the road. Um, so that is a, a relatively even matchup. Uh, nice AJ Fund index of sixty-two and a half points on that game. So we love to uh, see it. Speaking, speaking of AJ Fund indexes, uh, this is one of a couple questions that actually has a correct answer. Um, what is the lowest AJ Fund index of the week? What what uh, what game is uh, is is that going to be? Who's Iowa playing? Uh, Minnesota. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's hundred percent that. That's like thirty four and a half <laughs> off the top of the dome. Not a, not even a question. Thirty five uh, and a half. I looked that one up. <laughs> let's go. Points. Let's go. I couldn't pass that one up. Um, the other the other uh, question that has a correct a a correct 
answer what was the fight, Charlie? What was the final score of the Carnegie Mellon Geneva College game on Saturday? Ooh, a Charlie lot to a little. That, feels like yes. A, feels like yes. a lot to a little. Give me like a 52 to 10. No, no, no that's, that's not bad. That's not bad. Um, Carla, do you want to take a guess? Uh, 48 17. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, the final score. Um, and this uh, leads us into our, our Carnegie Mellon report. If Charlie will let me see my screen here. Oh, there. Stop it. Um, 41 7. Uh, the first half was sloppy. This is the game that I, I went to in person. Um, I did miss kind of the end of it because it was sunny and I was hot. Um, the first half was sloppy and slow, and uh, CMU led. Only by 14 7 at halftime. The third quarter was even slower. Uh, it was a punt fest. Um, but it would get in the fourth quarter. A couple turnovers led to quick scores by the Tartans. Um, and there were a couple other drives uh, in the fourth quarter as well. So the final score uh, reflected uh, the actual um, imbalance of, of uh, power there. Um, running quarterback Joey McGinnis. This is the best stat line that you'll come across from last weekend. Three carries for seven yards and three touchdowns. I just, I just, <laughs> we just, we love fullback numbers on our quarterbacks, don't we, fantastic. folks? That's <laughs> fantastic. Next up for the Tartans, a night home game Saturday uh, against some lady from West Virginia named Bethany. So I'm not sure how that's going to go, but I would I would I would pick Carnegie Mellon there. Bethany's um, a tough lady, though. She's a tough cookie. Don't, I will. Don't. We'll find out. We'll find out. We'll find out. Um, we've touched on the Mac games for the weekend, and frankly, I'd uh, I'd be stunned. Uh, real uh, quick though, yeah. on that Carnegie on that Carnegie Mellon report, please. Crappy, we have conference realignment to discuss. That's true. That's true. Um, and Carla, are I, you aware of the conference realignment news that is happening here? I I just got back from Chicago, so no, I am not aware of what is happening. <laughs> Carnegie Mellon starting the uh, 2025 season. So next season will mm -hmm. not be in the president's conference where they currently are with Teal and Geneva and friends. Mm -hmm. They are moving to the Centennial Conference, uh, a better uh, regarded conference where they mm -hmm. will be playing schools like Johns Hopkins, Ursinius, Dickinson, Franklin and Marshall, Gettysburg, McDaniel, and Muhlenberg. Yep. Um, it is it's a big deal. Big it, deal it is in a the conference realignment time. It is it is a big deal. I, I'm I'm I I I'm, haven't followed this long enough, obviously, to have a sense of um, what the real rivalries are, other other than than Grove City. Obviously, uh, that's that that game is going to be a big one coming up in a, in a couple weeks, two or three weeks. Um, so they're 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 losing some regional opponents, regional rivalries. Um, but it is a it is a better conference. It is a step up for Carnegie Carnegie Mellon, and um, we'll see we'll see how that goes uh, when they uh, when they when they make that switch next for next season. Um, a, a local school mm -hmm. a school losing a bunch of local rivalries to go play in a better conference with more travel. Who's done that before? Huh. It's yeah. um I don't. It sounds kind of familiar. Seems weird. Um, yeah, it does. Uh, heard about it. Uh, AJ, we want to talk about what's coming up in your world before we get to the uh, to the ranked on ranked um, games. Do um, you have a group of five after dark report for us? I sure do. Uh, I'm starting with the most after dark possible, which is Friday at 10 p.m. on mm -hmm. the CW. Wow. A real sentence in the year of our Lord 2024. We have San Jose <laughs> State 3-0. Going to Pullman to play Washington State, who is also three and zero. Your spread, Washington State favored by twelve. Totals the uh, fun index is fifty five and okay. a half. This might be a lot. This might be a letdown game, y'all. Kenny uh, Amanalolo has San Jose State rolling, mm -hmm. and there is a potential here for a letdown, Sam. For a letdown situation mm -hmm. uh i don't believe i was about to give i was about to go full let down look ahead sandwich and then i forgot if washington who washington state plays next oh they play boise next yep there's a your let down look ahead sandwich kids oh um, man that's that is a that's sketchy Oof. that is a this this has got a or a, is it a, an emotional letdown i don't want to say they were let down because of they that they lost to washington because mm -hmm. they didn't they won the apple cup never take that away from them okay. um but there there's a there's a letdown angle here to this yeah. mm -hmm. um give me the cougs but this one's going to be close okay. Carla, what do you think 
yeah um super close based on that um and but yeah Coogs playing at home so i like pullman after dark uh Coogs win but do not cover so yeah tight game next up at uh there it is uh noon espn u we have Tulane going to Lafayette. We have in Louisiana, inside Louisiana action. Ooh. They're playing the ULL Raging Cajuns. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tulane favored by three on the road over under fun index is 55 and a half, 54 and a half. Excuse me. Uh, Tulane, I love you so much and I love you scheduling bold, but you got your butt kicked twice. Yep. Um, you almost you almost got Kansas State. You were one bad call away from getting Kansas State, but you got your butts kicked in by Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a get right game. This is a game to feel right. I I'm taking the I'm taking the I'm taking the Green Wave to win big here. Okay, okay. Um, I'm I'm yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna agree. Uh, this is a chance to kind of get things figured out, and and uh, uh, even though it's on the road, uh, give me the Green Wave. Yep, same. Um. Tulane had K-State on the ropes. Um, and so I think they're a good team that just went up against a better team last weekend. But Tulane wins this one. We have at 2 p.m. on ESPN Plus, we have Virginia going to Conway to play Coastal Carolina. Uh, we have a supreme culture mix here. Mm-hmm. Y'all. You got Charlottesville going to Conway. Uh, Coastal Carolina, 3-0. and mm-hmm. They're doing well. Uh, Anthony Calandria is a dude though. He's a quarterback for, for Virginia. Um, he has had multiple, uh, in-game action where you're like, sir, there's something slightly wrong with you, but in a good way, (laughs) um, including getting his helmet ripped off and then staring the person who ripped it off in the face, sir, you are not built to do that, but I I appreciate that you believe in yourself that much. (laughs) Um, Virginia's favored by three and a half. Fun index is 55 and a half. It's a common theme there. Um, I'm going to go with the shots at home uh, to beat Virginia. Mm -hmm. This is on ESPN plus. So like, it's not going to be something that people are flipping through and we'll see. Right. So I think this could be silly and fun. The video quality will be absolutely dreadful, but it'll be something you can watch on your, on your screen. Yeah. Carla, what have you got? Oh gosh. Um, you know, I've been I've I've been on the beach chicken train for a long time, but something right now kind of tells me to take the take the Cavaliers in this one, just because, like you said, um, they've got some sass to them this year. They kind of have like the they kind of had the coastal sass mm-hmm. um, that when they had. So give me Virginia on the road. Why not? I'm taking the beach chickens. Give me give me them Chanticleers. Kaka. That's that's the sound that chicken <laughs> that these chickens make. <laughs> Kaka. Um, I want to cover one game uh, that isn't a G five game, but uh, we got an anxiety bowl on deck here a little bit. Three thirty okay. p.m. on ESPN. We got Arkansas at Auburn. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, uh, Auburn. Auburn ain't, is not it. Mm. Um, Arkansas. Listen, if Arkansas beats Auburn. Uh, by the way, Auburn's favored by three. Uh, fun index is 58 and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, if Auburn loses, I think the I think the dogs get called off of Sam Pittman for like an extra week. Okay. They still don't like him. They still mm-hmm. want him to go. But they call the dogs off for a week. Hugh Freeze, though, will have a lot of questions he's going to have to start answering um, because – Ooh, this this is not what they this is not what they signed up for. They mm-hmm. signed up for the dude who beat Saban twice, not the dude who whoops actually lost a lot of stupid games like all the time. That was kind of Hugh Freeze's thing. He would lose a bunch of stupid games and he would beat Nick Saban. And he'd be like, "What the hell? How the hell did that happen?" <laughs> this is how it happened. Um, you got to lose the stupid games. So uh, give me give me the Hogs. I want to see the Hogs go into Jordan Her, jo- sorry Jordan Hair, Jordan Jordan, Jordan Hair. Yes. Uh and and come out with a W. It would be way funnier that way. Are we are we just willing into existence that, that Auburn loses the rest of the season? Is that is that what we're doing? I mean, I'm willing them into no 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 no. Yeah. Okay. I'm willing them to lose stupid games. Just the stupid like, ones. I want them to like have confidence going into that Vandy game. 
Okay. So that Diego Pavia can reach in and just rip it out cleanly. That's what I'm here for. Okay. I'm willing into existence, Diego Pavia going full uh, Temple of Doom. Okay. And just ripping out the heart. Nice. I want to see that, mm-hmm. but it's going to take a minute. So, okay. uh, the, but them losing to Ar- Arkansas, this feels right. Okay. Good. Uh, who picked Suey for me? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, the Arkansas team almost beat Oklahoma State. Hello. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Woo pig. I can't believe I just said that. Ugh. Uh, that's kind of a cringe pick these days too but okay we'll pick <laughs> uh i want to go to 330 on fs1 the stupidest game in my opinion the stupidest game of the week we have arizona state going to lubbock to play texas tech and y'all Ooh. this is why the big 12 is the best conference um we have put all of our stupid into one yes. we've contained it into one unit mm-hmm. uh, a friend of mine actually sent me a message uh last weekend he said aj why is the big 12 so good and I was like, oh, because we've maximized stupid. We've maximized all these teams that are just like right in range of each other. There's not like a true crap end of the Big 12. There's also not a true elite end of the Big 12. And so it's all just it. it's all ACC Coastal all the way down. Mm-hmm. And so like you can get games like this. This game is going to be so dumb. Cam, Cam Scadabo is going to run for four million yards. Um Forks are up. Texas, by the way, Texas Tech is favored by three. The fun index is a relatively low 60 and a half. I really thought it'd be higher for this game. <laughs> um, yeah, give me the forks. Arizona State, they're, they're, they're built something special this year. Um, and I expect them to do big things uh, and, and get a win in Lubbock. Crappy, who you got? Hey, this is a, a tough one. Um, I, I They've... <sighs> Tech has struggled at home. It's been weird. Um, although last weekend they 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 uh, uh, putting up sixty six points. That maybe that's a, a get well kind of thing. I'm gonna go with the Red Raiders. I guess that right, means Trump, that yeah. um, I'm looking. I'm looking Arizona State. I think um, okay. because we forget that like you're talking about like big 12 being stupid like hi do we remember the pac-12 south because that's kind of remember how stupid the pac-12 there, south was there is that um, yeah you know it's like we just mm-hmm. kind of annex that into the big 12 and and jettisoned off the top tier of the big 12 and so you end up with all this stupid the, the transit of did the transit properties of conferences work here like <laughs> <laughs> we just transit of propertied into the big like the pac-12 south into the big 12 that um be. get get forks up yeah give me arizona state all right um, we're going to go to 7 p.m. on ESPN. We have Miami going to going up to Tampa to play South Florida. Mm-hmm. Again, South Florida is named terribly. Um, it's not in South Florida. No, it's at not. all. No. It's in Tampa. Yeah. Um, this is this this has this has this has maximum stupid potential. This is we have confident Miami, y'all. They are three yes. and zero. They feel good. Cam Ward has a thousand yards passing, eleven touchdowns in one pick. Okay, mm-hmm. we have confident Miami. It is time for the shoelace to come untied. Yes, it is time to trip, and this is where f- friends we all get a good fear of God game. Like when this game is tied at halftime, and you've got Miami fans like trying to sell their bitcoins, whatever's left of them, <laughs> to try and get more nil money to bring guys in. This is what I'm talking about. This game's going to get stupid and Mm -hmm. we're all going to watch because it's on ESPN. This is nationally televised. We're all going to see. I think Miami still wins, but this will, this game should get stupid. Crappy. What do you think? Uh, I just, I can't get the, um, the uh, notion of uh, South Florida um, scaring the bejesus out of, out of Alabama uh, in Tuscaloosa just a couple weeks ago. Um, So that's, that's a good team. Um, and I, I, like you, I'm waiting for Miami to, uh, to, to do the dumb thing. Um, I don't think this is the game that they lose, but this is the game that could be terrifying for them. So, uh, pick the hurricanes, but, um, I'm, I'm definitely going to watch this one. Yeah, I've got, I actually had this in my bottom of show, like last, last thing notes, Mm -hmm. I had this game marked that said, Again, this is the same USF team that gave Bama a scare a couple of weeks ago. Is this Miami's Clemsoning moment? Because we talk about that, like you know, the transitive verb of Clemsoning mm-hmm. in the ACC. Miami Clemsons every year. 
every year they Clemson and this has potential for that to happen here. Um, I'll go the same as you all and say Miami's the pick, but it, this game is going to be a lot closer than anybody expects, especially those wearing um, green and orange over on the Kane sideline. Uh huh. Speaking of Florida and the inner turmoils of Florida football that happens inside of Florida. I know what you're going to see next. <laughs> at 7 p.m. on yep. ESPN2. Al's <laughs> going to Florida State. Woke Campbell Stadium. <laughs> this is happening. All right. So look, they lost to Memphis last week and it did not look great. And no one in, in Tallahassee is happy. And what did we say about the first two weeks, the first two games of the season where Florida State got what? Mashed, right? Yeah. They got run through. And my hope for Florida State was that when we, when they got to the Memphis game, Memphis didn't run the football. Mm -hmm. Like the first two games of the season Memphis played, they just didn't. They didn't have to. They had Seth, or, uh, Seth Hannigan just chucking. And so I was like, okay, maybe Florida State has an opportunity to do. They didn't. They just didn't. Nope. And now you have... Cal, who is fully capable of mashing an SEC team like mm -hmm. Auburn, mm -hmm. um, and is very, very good at running the football because they have Jaden Ott. Jaden Ott is a, in my opinion, right now, he's my like initial dark horse Heisman candidate right now because mm -hmm. he is that guy. Um, I have a feeling that, uh, well, they're going to run, they're going to try and run through Florida State, yeah. full stop. They're just going to mm -hmm. try and run through them. Uh, and because Cal is not at home, they won't experience multiple 15-yard penalties for the students throwing stunt cards on the field. I don't know if you guys caught this. <laughs> I did not. I did not. So uh, for years, Cal fans in the stands mm -hmm. have had like little stunt cards. Like they, you hold up little things. They do. They like design shows yeah. every single yeah. game. It's a thing that they became known for. Well, for some reason, they started throwing them towards the field. Even Cal was winning. This was mm -hmm. not like a close game. Cal was winning. And they would throw them towards the field, and the referee would give them a 15-yard penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct on the student section. Okay. And then they did it again. And <laughs> there's a video of Justin Wilcox going out to the ref, telling him to turn the mic on, and he takes the lapel mic off of the ref and says, Cal student section. Please stop throwing cards onto the field. We have now received two unsportsmanlike penalties, each costing us 15 yards. We love you. We want you to have fun, but please stop in the most disappointed dad yelling voice possible. It's one of the funniest things. I have a video. I will send the video to you. Um, but it is, it, and he like, then he like hands the mic back to the ref and like puts it back on. And as he's walking back to the sidelines, you can see the dad rage happening. Yes. He's just like, <laughs> just <laughs> eyes closed, chin to the sky, ready to, ready to destroy everything. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he had to do that is hilarious. And by the way, they stopped doing it and they stopped getting 15 yard penalties and Cal ends up winning the game by quite a bit. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's going to be hilarious when they go to Florida state and wins. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, I'd go Bears. I'm I'm uh I this this is a recipe for O and for Florida State. I feel bad for my niece who goes to school at Florida State and was is was into the games last year. Um not not so much. Yeah. This is I, how football goes. Hmm? It, it mm -hmm. is. And welcome well welcome to being faculty at middle right now, right? Oh, um, yeah. But um but but yeah, no, I it, it, Florida State hasn't been able to stop anybody all season. And mm -hmm. when you have a, a running back as good as that coming, how how are they going to muster up a defense to stop him in a week? Like I just I don't see that happening. I think this game is tight, but I think I think the Bears went on the road. Yeah. We're gonna go down to uh there is there's one game at 8 30 p.m. It's on the CW network because that's where this is our new network, uh, our uh, assistant network of champions, I'll call them for right now. Purdue's going to Corvallis to play Oregon State. Is that <laughs> on just be got, before or after Dawson's Creek? Um it's it's in between one tree hill episodes. Okay. Okay, good, yep. good. Um by the way, if you do look up the CW schedule, it is filled with insanity. Um, uh, there's a, there's paid programming that leads right into football games, like juicers or something like that. Nice. Every time Jack, the Jack Hanna has a wildlife show on in the mornings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, is, um, is the CW t replacing the Jefferson pilot game? 
Is that is that the role that is being played here? Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. It is oh. carrying the Jefferson Pilot games for those of you who are too young to remember this. There was the Jefferson Pilot games, which were these like ACC noon games mm-hmm. that were just like Wake Forest is playing Virginia, and it was on. It was the Jefferson Pilot game, and it was just the game that was on, and they were always very good, um, but it was like this weird, like off-brand everything that we all loved and enjoyed. Uh, we have Purdue playing Oregon State. Oregon State's favored by four and a half. Uh, hey, Purdue, you might want to find an offense quick and fast. Because yeah. um, Oregon State thought they had a shot against or- Oregon, and then Oregon discovered, oh, wait, we can block people. Right. And then yes. they did that. Um, 10.30 p.m., though, ESPN. We got K-State going to BYU because mm-hmm. that's a conference game. S- surprise. Mm-hmm. K-State BYU is a conference game. Uh, K State favored by six and a half. Fun index is forty eight and a half. Not very BYU. Fun. I need you to. I need you to figure out what it is that you're going to be because they aren't scoring points like they were when they had um, Zach Wilson. They were throwing to a uh, Romney, one of mm-hmm. many, um, and they they're just winning sloppy games, which mm-hmm. great when your coach is an O line guy, but they're just winning these like really sloppy tough games kansas state coming off of a win might go into byu and ruin some evenings but um yeah you know what i'm gonna say it power cats are getting a win here uh they're gonna go to four now they're a very very good football team but uh let's see if byu can mount uh mount a scare late at night carla who you got yeah i've got kansas state here too um but it's interesting like looking at these two teams like kansas state um likes to run the football right and yeah. and you have the exact opposite for BYU at least right now I mean they're pretty much all Jake Retzlaff or nothing hmm. you know and so you know BYU has actually been defensively has been tough to run against um and they're playing at home K-State's not so great against the pass so you have like you know what I mean? So it's like, it's, yeah. a, it's a really interesting like the, they don't match up so this game is super intriguing um uh, you, you know me. I'm always rooting for my purple power cats. So I'm gonna, I'm picking K State here. But this game is dangerous for them to stay ranked nationally. This game's gonna be super close because it's in Provo. So, um, but K State picks the win, picks up the win here. I, I was looking for reasons to 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 pick Brigham Young, and I, it, uh, um, I can't. Uh, K State is is gonna is gonna win this one. And finally, and finally, we have we have a Hawaii test this week. Oh no. You and I goes to Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii. The Hawaii went to the mainland. It did not go well. They got palindromed by Sam Houston State. They lost 31-13. Um, oh. Go Bows. Bows are going to win this one. It's This is going to be a good time for Bows fans. Uh, hopefully you get an early night. Uh, but go Bows. An early night that starts at 11.59 p.m. on the East Coast. It's an early night. <laughs> Carl. <laughs> crappy who you got uh, <laughs> uh hawaii at home um yeah. in the uh, friendly confines of the clarence tc ching athletics complex that's right um it is the it is the rainbow warriors fortress and they will uh they will have no trouble beating the northern iowa panthers i will wear my rainbow pajamas in support go bows but i will be soundly asleep <laughs> good for you that's the right thing to do <laughs> that's um that is what i'm going to be doing as well so as I was going through that list of games, I noticed yeah. a bunch of games that had teams with numbers next to them. Yes. What do those mean? Um, if uh, uh, our longtime Carla and crappy listeners will uh, will uh, understand that that we do occasionally pick games that are played by teams that are ranked. In oh, in, um, and you had you had at least one in your list. Um, I mean, I had I had like. I had one. I did have. I did have. Kansas State did have a number next to them. I didn't get yes. it. I yeah. figured it was just like, hey, this is like a footnote, probably down mm-hmm. there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but but uh, we have we have a few of those. Um, but actually, some really good stuff um, mm-hmm. coming on on both Friday and Saturday. Uh, let's start uh, on Friday after or Friday evening, um, eight p.m. on Fox, number twenty-four, Illinois, at number twenty-two, Nebraska. Uh, the Huskers are favored by eight and a half points. The AJ Fun Index is forty-two and a half. Um, AJ, what do you think about this? Um, we have ranked Big Ten West football, and mm-hmm. it, it's still a Big Ten West. Don't at me. I, um, 
it is Big Ten West football. Nebraska looks really good. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe it's because they played Colorado. And Colorado will make any offense look good. But this this was actually like the first time I think that like their defense looked Mm -hmm. tough. Yeah. And Nebraska might be back. Question mark. Uh, remember, I said at the very, very start of the season, don't be surprised when Nebraska is seven and zero going into that Ohio State game. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is it's very interesting because they're not winning in like weird ways, or they're like just barely beating teams that they should beat. They are beating the brakes off of teams right now, mm-hmm. and uh, Dylan Hill is the truth, and is Patrick Mahomes a literally cloned? To the point to the way they walk the same. Um, (laughs) Give me Nebraska at home. Balloons are going up. By the way, don't litter with balloons. Nebraska should really stop doing that. It's going to kill the local environment. But they they love their fancy littering. (laughs) Carla? Look, so how many years ago when when Matt Matt Rule was hired, we said this is a good hire. This is a good fit. It's a good culture fit. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing that now finally out of this Huskers team. But if we're going to get to 7-0 and in Nebraska, and that's one of the things we're trying to will into existence this season, they mm-hmm. have to win this game, right? Yep. Um, like AJ said, Huskers have a good this year so far. Um, and now they're playing under the lights at home on a Friday night on national TV. If you follow Big Ten West football, mm-hmm. that's a tough, tough ask for the road team. So this is a really tough test for the, for the Illini who, okay, they beat Kansas, but we don't know what that means now. Like this, this doesn't appear to be the Kansas team that we've seen the last couple of years has been right in the thick of things in the yeah. big 12. This looks like Kansas is taking a step back this year. Um, however, <laughs> true to big 10 West football. These are two of the top scoring defenses thus far in the big 10 and two middle of the road offenses. Um, if you like mm. big 10 football, this yes. game has your name all over it, but Huskers win at home. Uh, it's supposed to be 82 a kickoff and that feels wrong. This that feels like, feel wrong. this uh, feels yeah. like it needs to be 54 degrees. Mm-hmm. Somebody has got to have warm apple cider, yes. perhaps a, perhaps a stew or a chili going. That's yeah. what this game needs. That sounds good. And it's going to be 82 and that's wrong. And this is why climate change uh, is something we need to do something about. No, um, no other reasons. Yeah. Just that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I totally agree. Um, Carly, you, you mentioned uh, Nebraska's coaching hire. I'm going to start with Bert. And I got to hand it to Bert. Um, he came back home to the Big Ten and uh, initially kind of just, you know, made Illinois a, a, a sort of a problem uh, for the other teams in the conference. Uh, you know, so they weren't uh, winning big. I think they were five and seven a year ago, but um, an annoyance. They they certainly were. Um, it appears the Illini have have taken a, a, a step forward from that. Um, and and so I, I, the offense is is OK. Uh, but they play defense like uh, an old Burt Wisconsin teams play defense. Uh, so yeah. they're giving up just nine points a game. Um, the problem is that Nebraska, uh, you remember the black shirts? This team looks like the black shirts of old. Um, mm-hmm. They're giving up so far, again, really early in the season, but they're they're giving up uh, six points and change a game. Um, and we're talking about a night game in Lincoln. Uh, I think Nebraska wins this one and keeps its winning streak alive, so we can we can have a seven note Nebraska coming in at Columbus uh, in late October. We move to Saturday. We go back to the big house, uh, three thirty p.m. on CBS. Da, 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 da. Number eleven USC at number eighteen Michigan. Uh, the Trojans are favored by five and a half points. The AJ Fund Index is a Big Ten ish forty six and a half. This is the conference opener. Weird as hell thing to say. This is the conference opener for both teams. Um, Carla, what do you think? Yeah, it's worth noting all the games we're talking about today mm-hmm. are conference games. Just these file that away games. in the back of conference your brain. Conference games. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's time to see who both of these teams are. All right. right. Um, after getting destroyed at home by now number one Texas two weeks ago, mm-hmm. um, how does the home team respond here? Are they ready for this USC offense? They obviously weren't ready for a strong offense back then. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, USC looks like it could be the real deal this year. Although the challenge continues to be on the defensive side of the ball. Um, 
right now, and again, it's early, um, but the Trojans rank 14th of 18 in the Big Ten in total defense. Mm -hmm. um, but they're middle of the league in rush defense, and that's a good thing in this game because the only yeah. offense that, that Michigan has really mustered so far this year has been the ground game. Um, so as long as the SC defense can hold, I don't think the Wolverines have enough op on offense to keep up. Um I see this as a USC win on the road in the big house. Yeah, oh, heartbreaking. AJ, what do you think? Um, Michigan ain't it this year. I'm very interested to see if USC can do a little bit more with their offense. Um, they opened the season against LSU in a banger of a game. Miller Moss looked incredible. Also looks like a like an mm -hmm. 80s movie villain if you go look at his headshot on ESPN.com. That's a great film. Um <laughs> <laughs> but he looks like the kid who's going to go, my father will hear of this. And uh -huh. then like, you have to move on from there, but they played Utah state last or two weeks ago. And it was just like, like, okay, let's just, let's just go. We'll mm -hmm. just see how it feels. He only threw for, he's only thrown two touchdowns this year, but he's got 600 yards of passing. Um, he's very, very good. They are capable of handing it off. They are capable of running the ball. Like USC has like a good, well-balanced offense mm -hmm. and their defense appears at least against LSU and, and Utah state to be able to get stops to not give up points. I think next, I think this is the week where we really see what the USC defense is made of on mm -hmm. the road. Um, give me USC to win in the big house again. I we we do hate to see it, but um, giving mm -hmm. USC to win because I think we this do. is this is where they they are going to show where they are in the Big Ten. Um, once again, the Weasels looked super unimpressive last weekend. Uh, only eking out a ten point win against Arkansas State. Um, they lost Colston Loveland, uh, arguably their best offensive player. He's the tight end uh, to injury. Although the team said this week it's a uh, they they haven't said if he's going to play uh, against USC or not, but um, it, they said that the injury is not as bad as it appeared. Um, they they settled on the running quarterback. Um, I would love to see Alex Orgy match the uh, the output of the running quarterback at Carnegie Mellon. Um, after and that was after QB uh, Warren Davis Warren Warren Davis Davis Warren. Whichever it is, he uh, threw twenty seven. He's going to go to Michigan Law School and have himself a law firm at some point I in his know, life. I'm sure. I know he is. If he doesn't have one already, um, Michigan's defense has been decent. Uh, not what you would expect after with the with the, the guys that they've returned, um, the experience that they've returned. But it will face quite the challenge with uh, USC's offense, sixteen uh, in the country in total yards per game so far. Um, and here's the thing, as as you guys have mentioned, the Trojans are playing a little bit of defense, not not a great deal of defense, but but enough. Um, if you think about uh, what USC was last year, um, had they been able to play just a little bit of defense, uh, that would have been a a a frightening team. Um, and maybe this is the season where where they've got to figure that out. Uh, Coach Sharon is going to have to figure out um, some stuff after this game because the Trojans are going to beat him in the big house on Saturday. Uh, at 4 p.m. on Fox, number 12, Utah. At number 14, Oklahoma State. Utah is favored by two on the road. The AJ Fund Index is 54 and a half. Um, we will start by saying that Camp Rising is expected to play for Utah. So, AJ, what does that mean? So, Cam Rising has a laceration in his hand. Mm -hmm. They did not talk about what that actually meant. Uh, he got injured towards the end of uh, their last game when he got shoved, like, off. He was running, and he got shoved in, out of bounds mm -hmm. and, like, landed awkwardly in the bench area to, like, some equipment, like some sort of travel case or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um he appears to still be playing. It's going to be 94 degrees to kick off in Oklahoma. It's going to be real gross. Yeah. Um, I expect Oklahoma State to get up for this one. Mm -hmm. um, ranked on ranked game at home. You're on national TV. This is their chance to shine. This is also the time that Oklahoma State would usually trip over themselves real good. Um, so I I'm interested to see 
which Utah team shows up? Is it the one that's going to bruise you and beat you to death? Or is it the one that has looked a little soft at times? They're not the team that beat Oregon twice in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, I, give me you, give me Oklahoma state. I'm going to take Oklahoma state at home. Um, but I, I think Utah, I, I, it's going to come down to really which Utah team shows up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Carla. This is a night game in Stillwater. I would feel a little bit differently about what I see here because mm-hmm. who boy, this game has dog fight written all over it. Um, we've already talked about Oklahoma state needing a miracle a couple of weeks ago to, to, to beat Wu pig. Mm-hmm. Um, Oklahoma State has one of the best passing offenses in the league. Alan Bowman already has almost a thousand yards on the season with eight touchdowns and just two picks. Um, so the pokes are pretty one dimensional on offense, right? And that Utah defense is still pretty darn good. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not an offensive juggernaut, but we knew that, right? And, and Utah has has overcome some things. Um, this season, they've just kind of been business like, which is what we've come to expect from the Utes. That's the way that they that's the way that program offer it uh, operates. So here's why Utah can and should win this game. Okay. Oklahoma State has always had one recurring problem. Defense, as in it doesn't exist, right? It never has. We've always said that about about Oklahoma State. Um, and it appears to be more of the same this year. The Pokes are dead last in the Big 12 in passing defense near the bottom of the conference in every other defensive category. So as long as that Utah defense, which is really good against the pass, can slow down Bowman and the passing game, this should be a Utah win on the road, but it's definitely going to be a barn burner. Um, uh, Alan Bowman has looked fantastic. Uh, big numbers so far. That's not uh, an unusual thing for um, uh, for Oklahoma State. Uh, the the Cowboys also have uh, Ollie Gordon Jr., although he doesn't seem to. Um, this is 260 yards, 16 yards on the season, and four touchdowns so far. I'm not sure where he fits in with that offense. That that seems like he is being underutilized, and, and maybe, um. That's a that is a, a way to kind of slow down the the game and keep the ball away from the Utes. Um, with Kim rising back, however, uh, with Utah's I, I I think consistently physical style, um, I'm I'm not sure that Oklahoma State uh, is is going to be able to uh, to kind of keep up with that. Um, I think the Utes will win and a a narrow win, a narrow win on the road um, at 7:30 p.m. on ABC. Uh, number six, Tennessee at number 15, Oklahoma. The Vols are favored by seven. Um, and the AJ Fund index is 57 and a half points. Uh, who goes first? I don't remember. Carla? Sure. Sure. Um, why not? <laughs> um, okay. Again, conference game. Yeah. Conference game. Conference um, game. Okay, Nico, let's see what you've got. Right. Um, Because here's the thing with this game. It's Tennessee, not Oklahoma, with the gaudy offensive numbers entering this game. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, The Vols have the top scoring offense in the SEC right now. Let that sink in. Um, And and while Oklahoma has won all of its games, it's it's not the big offensive show that we've come to expect out of Norman. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just not the the you know fun and gun sooner offense that that we've known over the past several years. Um, But speaking of Norman. Night games at Memorial, <laughs> a little spicy, right? Great environment there. And that in and of itself has changed the outcomes of football games. Mm-hmm. Um, but in this case, the Vols offense has been chugging along. The Sooner offense isn't as prolific as we're used to. And I'm not sure the Oklahoma defense can throw enough of a speed bump as they need to in order to win this game. I'm taking Tennessee on the road, but this Mm -hmm. is going to be super, super close and entertaining as all heck. Have this game on one of your screens on Saturday night. Um, But the Vols get the win on the road, and Nico kind of puts his name in the books. Excellent advice to to, to watch this one. AJ, what do you think? Tennessee fans do not wish you to perceive this Vols team, and it's really hard to do when they're ranked sixth. Okay? Um, Tennessee in their last five games has outscored their opponents 274 to 37. Mm-hmm. 24 of those 37 were to Vandy last year. Yep. 
Yes. Okay. They've only given up 13 points. Now, have they played great teams? Not really. Nope. No. Uh, they played NC State, which was a beat down. They played UT Chattanooga and they played uh, someone else. I forget to start the season. Um, they've not really played anybody of Oklahoma's caliber. Uh, their, Neither their of most these... recent their most recent game was a seventy one to nothing win. That's right. They play Kent State. The Kent State Golden Flashes. Yes. So, uh, by the way, res- much respect to Kent State. When asked, "Do you want a running clock or do you want to shorten the quarters for the rest of the game?" They basically said, "No, we die like men." Um, <laughs> they declined. By the yeah. way, they really did decline yeah. uh, a running clock or anything like that. They it was offered and they declined. Um, but. I'm with Carla here. Mm-hmm. This is Nico's either Nico's coming out party mm-hmm. or the rude awakening. It's one of the two. Um, he is very, very good. Tennessee is very, very good. I think they have a better defense than they've had in the past to go with an offense mm-hmm. that is fully capable of absolutely turning, turning the turf into fire. I'm taking Tennessee on the road as well. Okay. And the oh, by the way, just just for your ears, I'm just going to ask you to do this. I know yes. that Kirk Herb Street is on the call, and mm-hmm. I know that he's not exactly great, but you know what's going to be worse? Rocky Top and Boomer Sooner over and over and over again. Oh. These bands only know two songs, okay? Oh, they only God. know two songs in total. So just keep that in mind. You might want to put the audio of another game on <laughs> while this game is playing, or else you're going to hate Boomer Sooner and Rocky Top in real time. I already hate Rocky Top. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I, Carl, this is a you're in a tough position uh, in Nashville. Um, get ready to hate Boomer sooner, too. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, uh, so maybe maybe what you do is you have the sound up for uh, for Cal and Florida State and the sound down for this one. That, that would be that. Would be. That is the correct thing to do. You're okay. going to want to keep your ears on the Cal Florida Here we State go. game. We uh we we do try to to be helpful here at the Carly Crappy Show. I don't think this is a tough game to figure out. Um, I, I'm not sure that Oklahoma knows what it is yet this season. They uh they let Tulane hang with them for a half, uh, a little bit longer. Um, struggled against Houston at home. Um, not that the, Houston's not a bad team, but that's a an Oklahoma uh should not be doing should not be doing that. Tennessee, simply put, is one of the best teams in the country. Um, as I as I watch more stuff from them, um, it's possible that, that Nico could have an off night. Uh, this is going to be a tough environment, Carla, as you referenced. But I think it's going to be a long night in Norman um, for for Sooners fans. I think Tennessee wins this, and probably and 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 even covers uh, that that seven point spread. Ah, boys and girls, you can hear the Carlin Crappy Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and a variety of other podcasting hosts. You can watch us on YouTube and on the show's Facebook page or on the Facebook page or watch us both places. That'd be fine. Um, you may recall from a year ago that you can read us on our Substack if you like us. Please subscribe, rate, and review if you don't mind your own damn business. Uh, be sure to come back next week when we see exactly how wrong we were. AG, is there anything else that you're looking forward to this weekend? 5 p.m. The CW Network skillet game TCU at SMU. That game gets stupid every year. TCU is favored by three. Just you know, keep right around dinner time. Put that on and just see what happens. A lot of lot of the the, the C. I don't even know if I is the CW on YouTube. That is TV a broadcast. That is a net. That is a broadcast network. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have it's. To uh, I believe it's. It was WPNT in in yeah. Pittsburgh, and uh, I believe oh. it is still actually. Yeah, it's 22. The point, uh, and they okay. are the. Okay. They are the home of the CW. Okay. Um. That's uh, that might be something I have to check out this weekend. Uh, Carla, uh, what, what, are, what are you looking forward to? Yeah, dig out your rabbit ears for that game. Um, <laughs> some of you will get that reference. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm looking at, at Kent at Penn State, um, three thirty on mm-hmm. Big Ten Network. Um, hey, 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 Nitz, don't don't mess around with the MAC team again, okay? Action. Thanks, love you, bye. Um, and then just for funsies, I had a little note here on the Iowa Minnesota game. I know we already talked about that the, mm-hmm. with the fund index on that game being thirty five and a half. That's actually lower than the spread for number one Texas hosting uh, Louisiana Monroe. 
Um, the, the, the line on that game is 44 and a half. Mm -hmm. Um, and for that matter, it's also lower than the Penn state line, which is 48 and a half over Kent. So, okay. um, it, that, that's, that's a record low, um, uh, fun index there. Um, and also uh, where I will be part spending part of my day on Saturday, um, it is homecoming Woo! at MTSU and, mm -hmm. uh, the blue Raiders are hosting Duke. Hmm. Yes. Yes. That How Duke. hard could it possibly be? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, Duke, although I will say Duke is only a 14 point favorite, um, uh, okay. which is slightly surprising. Mm -hmm. Um, and they actually changed the game time on this, um, because for whatever reason, this game got promoted. Um, so this game is now at four Eastern on ESPNU. That's awesome news for national television for my blue Raiders. Not so great news for our friend Jake Rose, right. um, who will not get the call now, um, on, on homecoming. Um, so Jake, I hope you're doing something fun. I'll be at the parade. Come find me. Text me later. Um, but I will also be at the homecoming parade and all the party and festivities, although I probably will not see much of the game at all if I even go in because <clears throat> Saturday we celebrate the third birthday of one Carlin crappy show mascot. My daughter Ellie turns three. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell on yeah. Saturday. Um, Yay, happy feetball. birthday, sweetie. Yay, feetball. Um, there's no better way to spend uh, spend the third birthday um, than watching a marching band. That's her favorite thing right now is watching bands. Nice. And so we are so we are going to the parade to go watch the marching band because mm -hmm. as it was with the wedding last weekend, she thought everything was about her. Um, I'm positive that she will believe exactly. I, she, why would I'm you? Positive. Why would you think anything otherwise? <laughs> exactly. That seems weird. <laughs> so so the, we're throwing a parade in Ellie's honor in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, um, and right. we will be celebrating. Uh, Kind of lightly, we're going to do a real thing next weekend. But like, we just got back from Chicago. I can't throw a three year old's birthday party this weekend. It's not happening. Gotcha. Um, so we're going to go enjoy the parade and enjoy some funsies and face painting and all that kind of fun stuff um, and take in some of the homecoming festivities. But happy birthday, sweetie. I love you. Happy birthday, Ellie. Um, we could not possibly have a better show mascot, uh, no matter how much Charlie tries. Um, unless I can get Charlie to talk and then maybe. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, guys, I'm obviously uh, paying attention to uh, my Ohio teams. As we mentioned before, uh, the Bobcats are in Lexington, Kentucky, ready to take down the Wildcats after uh, when they, they suffer a, a disgusting letdown um, uh, after almost beating Georgia a week ago. Um, do I really think that's going to happen? Sure. Why not? Uh, I'm also being also will be watching Ohio State. Uh, they play Marshall. They're only forty point favorites, so this is a, a, a step up in competition. Um, again, just looking for progress. Uh, we'll we'll see how it goes. Uh, the other thing I will be working on is uh, trying to figure out how I can talk my folks through signing up for Peacock because Ohio State has announced that um, uh, it's game against Michigan State, the conference opener next weekend. Night game in East Lansing. Okay. On Peacock. Oh, that's not good. Not a problem for me, but um, because my folks don't have it, I guess it is a problem for me. But we'll we'll get that figured out. We've done, we've done this before. We've done this before <laughs> over the phone. Um, tech support will get it done. Uh, boys and girls, I hope whatever you do, wherever you are, you enjoy your college football games this weekend. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for reading the Carla and Crappy Show. Um, guys, uh, all three of you, thank you for being here. All, all three of us. There are two of you. There's <laughs> one. This goes back to the journalism <laughs> math thing. Um, guys, thank you for your very, there's someone behind, there's someone behind AJ. That's why. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. It was a ghost. Oh. Ellie yeah. was telling me all about her imaginary monsters today at dinner. So maybe is there one behind me? Ah. Is it pink and fuzzy and likes macaroni and cheese? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's Thanks. called hunger. That's <laughs> 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 guys. Enjoy your games. Have a great weekend. And uh, we will see you back here next week. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. <laughs>